Feeling good? Are you ready? Yeah. Cool. Okay. You're listening to the Clean Sailors Podcast, all about sea, marine, sailing, and keeping it clean. I'm your host, Holly, founder of Clean Sailors and a sailor myself with a passion for the health of our mighty oceans. In our podcast, we explore some of the areas in which sailing and our wider marine industry can become that bit cleaner. Through conversations with experts, innovators, inventors, and activists, all working towards improving the health of our seas, We showcase the people and projects changing the way things are done. Today we'll be talking about grey water and why cleaning products on our boats are super important. Joining me is Angus Johnson, co-founder of EcoWorks Marine. Hello, Angus. Hi, how are you doing? Very well, how are you? Good, very good. We are here in actually a sunny Falmouth in Cornwall, UK. Angus, we obviously, as sailors and clean sailors, are super interested in the impact that we're having on our waters. Now, we know that grey water is really our wastewater on our boats, whether it's from our sinks, showers, and obviously on land, our baths and washing machines too. Everything that we're using ultimately ends up either in sewage or when we're on our boats, more often than not, in the sea. Now, appreciating that traditional cleaning products in particular are chemical based, right? I mean, these are things that we've been using for decades to eradicate any dirt or any kind of germs or bacteria from most surfaces. Now, appreciating that their sort of boating sailing environment is a little bit different from being at home. I mean, there's virtually nothing to separate us from the waters we're sailing. So in some ways, it's kind of obvious that we should be using cleaner products because they're heading straight onto the water. Grey water is essentially refers to wastewater generated from all sorts of areas. So sinks, showers, drain lines, sumps, washing machines. So within any of those elements, we are placing products, or any products down those drain lines and then in those washing machines with any detergent. So everything we're using is eventually ending up within a system or not, you know, or directly into the ocean. So not all grey water ends up within a treatment system and that treatment system may not actually be able to treat the water to a pure element for then moving on into the, into the water streams. I mean, as you say, we, you know, we're down in Cornwall, beautiful day today, but just three days ago, you know, we saw waste treatment being discharged into the ocean. There was a few alerts out, a number of beaches around our coastlines due to heavy rainfalls. Now, and within that water will be a lot of black water, which is essentially from loos, but also grey water. And if we're focusing on grey water in terms of our product usage, then there's an awful amount of contaminants within that grey water. So, but we can use, we can consciously use different products that will reduce our impact on the environment hugely through the grey water. So with EcoWorks, you know, we've developed a range of products using a completely kind of different concept of, of cleaning, as, as, it, as it were, than the traditional methods of cleaning. And just going on to, I mean, you made a really interesting, important point around even sewage work. So I think for many of us around the world, we believe that obviously when even you're on land, whatever goes down the drain goes into a sewage work, it's all cleaned out and heads back into our system. And actually something that we highlighted in a bit of research we did recently was Even then, water isn't cleaned. I mean, the more sewage works aren't designed to remove the whole host of chemicals out of the water that we put into them. So whether it's bleach, cleaning products, whether you're cleaning your car outside and the sort of water's heading down the drain, all of that does on land head into some sort of sewage system. But the sewage system isn't geared to clean out chemicals, right? It deals with a lot of organic compounds, such as you mentioned black waters and sewage, et cetera. So even even with sewage treatment works, the system is so imperfect. I mean, there's a lot obviously heading out into our waters. Absolutely. And and we're not just talking about the raw materials of these products in in such of the chemicals, the toxic chemicals that are used, but also, you know, we saw microplastics and microbeads were used 
in a huge way in a lot of cosmetics, you know, particularly in body wash products. The, those microbeads in particular, they, they don't get stopped by the grey water treatment plants and they will just head straight into the ocean. Luckily for the UK, we did ban the use of microbeads in products not so long ago. I can't think of the date right off the top of my head, but I know it wasn't so long ago. And a lot of other countries are following suit in that. So, you know, so there's the element of the toxic chemicals, but it's also the element of the, the microbeads as well that is and, and still found in many products around the world as well. Sure. And you mentioned two microfibers, and that's also been a topic that's close to our hearts. I mean, appreciating that anything that we're washing clothes, synthetic materials, which a lot of our, obviously, the garment industry uses these days and has actually used for decades, obviously. It's quite a revolutionary product back in the day, polyester, nylon, etc. All of that obviously releases tiny particles of these fabrics, which are plastic and that is heading to into our water supply so you're right aside from pure chemicals you know which are effective cleaners totally understand that we're also contributing microplastics as well to these to our water environments 100 percent. yeah it's a pretty vast subject really when we talk about cleaning as a whole but i mean yeah like you say there's also the polyesters the polyamides that come out of cloths you know a lot of those materials themselves as, as one kind of unit they're not recyclable polyamides are not really recyclable and also small strands of those polyester and polyamides are getting into our water streams through washing in the washing machines. So there's, there's lots of elements to look at and it's not really, it's not always one answer, but we can certainly look at options to reduce the impact we can have in cleaning. It is a very, very big topic mm-hmm. and I'm conscious not to blow my own mind, <laughs> <let> alone <laughs> that of the listeners. And whilst it's obviously super interesting, I'd love for us to talk a little bit about you and obviously how companies such as EcoWorks are making huge steps towards championing a real change in the marine industry alone, but also beyond in terms of better products for cleaner, healthier seas. So Angus, appreciating sailor to sailor that you obviously have a background within the sailing sort of environment. So what, where did it start for you? What kind of experience have you had in it? Well, in terms of my marine kind of industry experience, I suppose it started, well, I started sailing when I was a young kid. My grandfather sailed I went to college and actually did a course in outdoor education which was just a complete laugh really <laughs> we did a lot of walking a lot of sailing a lot of hiking and generally learned how to run an outdoor center but that led me on to becoming a dinghy sailing instructor so when I was about sort of 17 18 so I did that for a few years and then from there I sort of did a bit of traveling and and, and, and then I ended up actually down in Cornwall, where when my grandfather had a boat at, at Miley Yacht Harbour, actually not far from where we are now. I went to the Falmouth Marine School, did yacht fit out and composites. And then from there, I ended up working at Miley Yacht Harbour itself and worked within the marina and worked within the yard. So I've had kind of experience in various areas of the marine industry and, and using all sorts of maintenance products and et cetera through that. And then from Myler, I then, I, you know, Falmouth in, in Cornwall is a, there's a huge network of yachties down here. And I managed to kind of find myself into that network and was extremely lucky and, and got a job on Ranger, the J-Class, where I worked for about two and a half years, actually. And that's, that's where the products started to derive from. My father actually, were, who is sort of co-founder, was, was actually supplying similar products to the sort of land-based we could sort of say the facilities market in the industry so that's everything from from office spaces to pubs to clubs to councils police stations there was trains all sorts i was on on range and you know we do a lot of traveling all over the world we go to the caribbean all around the mediterranean i was popping in and out of chandleries all over the place particularly in Mallorca, where we were based for one winter doing a 10-year survey and I sort of started to take note of what products we were using and what products were actually available in the chandleries. There was a number of products sort of paying a bit of lip service to this sort of eco-friendly kind of term and sustainability, etc. But having the background that I had and knowing what my father knew and the information that I was gaining from him, I could tell that these products were really just doing that, paying a lip service to the cause and weren't really actually weren't really doing it right. They weren't really an honest, honest products, I wouldn't say. They were definitely, you know, definitely had the thought process, which is great. And that's the start of it. But we could do better. So, you know, I spoke to my father and I spoke to Pinmar Supply, who, who still sell our products today. 
they were very interested. So we spent six months designing the range. We actually developed a lot of the products on Ranger. I was getting sent product down and we were developing it on Ranger, unbeknown to the owner at the time. I think. <laughs> but yeah, six months later, we had the full, we had the full range, everything from interior products to exterior products. So, you know, meaning all surface cleaners, laundry detergents. We had our tea cleaner, our yacht wash. I went from being sort of the boasting on Ranger to now wandering around the yard trying to sell my friends cleaning products. And they were all a bit like, man, Angus, what are you up to? <laughs> but, you know, we have some incredible biochemists and, and I've now been working with them for about six years. And every time I speak to them, I learn something new. And it's an incredibly in-depth topic, learning about cleaning products and learning about the do's and the don'ts and the what's better than what, you know. And I'm sure we'll talk a bit more about how that developed later on. But yeah, no, that's my background, really. And I just, I still do sailing today. I still go sailing. We little less so in recent times, but I sail locally and still do a bit of super yacht racing as well. So I've kept my, my foot in the door with that, but there's not been so much racing going on with COVID over the past year or so. Sure. I appreciate it's changed things for a few of us, hey? But what a story and awesome. What an incredible way to see the world on no less one of the most beautiful boats there are actually out there, the J-Class. But let's then just dig into what EcoWorks is about, because obviously the same cleaning products, but EcoWorks, I'm taking this verbatim from a lot of your material, but you founded it in 2015 as a company. And the aim is really to provide cleaner products to the marine industry. So it's kind of replacing the harmful traditional chemical products with environmental biorenewable technology. And this isn't just for the environment, right? It's also for human health, appreciating that not just what goes down our drains impacts us and ends up in our waters and potentially our drinking waters, but also because, you know, we are using, even when you're applying, breathing in solvents, et cetera, cleaning products have an impact on us without question. So let's talk about why, like why EcoWorks came about. What is it about chemical products that just aren't cutting it? Well, you know, there's, there's, we've had traditional cleaners for many years, but potentially they are, as you say, they're harmful to the human health and they're harmful also to the environment. You know, traditional cleaners are trusted. They widely accept me and they, and, they, and they do achieve a result to a certain extent. But there are massive downsides. You know, performance is not always great. Certain raw materials in traditional cleaning products, they won't you know, using, using high acidity and uh, alkalinity or synthetic solvents, etc., they won't necessarily get to things like odours at the source. They might burn them off the surface, but they won't necessarily get to the odour at source. So there's also, you know, caught, there's transport issues. They could be flammable, so they can't be used in certain environments. Product classifications, so we mean the kind of the pictograms, the diagrams you see on the back wall, will often be a little bit more harmful looking. You know, you see the dead fish and and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of downsides to traditional cleaning products. And, you know, an EcoWorks will use, we use, basically we use very simple ingredients that perform well with a limited impact on the environment. So the way it's done is it's, it's, it's a mass, it's quite, a, it's quite an in-depth process, but we take raw materials and we put them into sort of a, a chart, as you were, and every raw material we can, we can see what, the biodegradability level of each raw material is and the effectiveness on the environment each raw material is. It's sort of set up in a system where you can choose the raw materials with the limited impact on the environment and on human health, and then we only use those with raw materials. Any raw materials that doesn't meet certain criteria by the biochemist, they'll get replaced with something else that is more friendly and removed from the, from the system. So, so all our raw materials are readily biodegradable, which will mean that everything will it's sort of a classification that will mean that they pass certain screening tests so they assume that you know all the compounds will rapidly and completely biodegrade in aquatic environments or aerobic environments as well so basically it's exactly that really we, we try and choose every raw material is thought about and is taken a screening test to then combine them together to produce a product that will do what it's asked to do and that's whether it's removing grease or brine or removing salt from grp or using removing fats from from wastewater so every every product has a purpose and every product uses raw materials with an absolute limited minimal 
if anything, impact on the environment. It's incredibly refreshing to hear. And it's also, I think it's just incredibly intelligent. I mean, appreciating that so many products, whether it's from your shampoo to, I don't know, your loo cleaner, is geared around the prime purpose of cleaning. And I think perhaps that's where we know so much better now is that they have to fill, products have to fulfill their primary purpose, but they also, their secondary, if not as important purpose needs to be that sort of limited environmental impact. And I think you mentioned a couple of really interesting things there. You know, traditional cleaners are widely accepted and you know, you go into any supermarket or even Charles Louis still, and you, you see the old traditional names on most of the shelves. When does it become not widely accepted? I mean, this feels like a big enough issue and has been a big enough issue for long enough that there needs to be some actually really strict standards being set or stricter standards being set around the kind of ingredients that are going into any products that are being produced. I mean, you talked about, you know, a lot of these chemicals such as bleach, they're, they're intended to burn off a surface. So they are biocides by design in some ways. They're made to kill, kill germs, kill viruses. And obviously now more than ever, that's an exceptionally useful selling point given the last year of all of our lives. But that means that they continue to kill things wherever they are. I mean, you know, using bleach on your surfaces and then ending up in the drain, it continues to be bleach wherever Where is the massive mismatch in the system around almost like the legislation around this stuff and actually a pure business opportunity for for a team like yours who are just ahead of the curve? Absolutely. Well, you know, all our products are produced under REACH regulations. Now, that's sort of EU, EC REACH regulations. Now that's with Brexit. Now, UK, it will be UK REACH. And REACH is basically registration, evaluation, authorization, and restriction of chemicals in the European Union, but it will also become the UK. So REACH will actually ban materials. They do a lot of research. There's also external businesses that do research into individual chemical raw materials. So over the years, a lot of certain raw materials have been banned and are being removed, particularly from paints and antifouls. So you've seen over in recent years, there's been quite a lot of raw materials removed from antifouls. So that's, you know, in, in the UK, we actually, well, in Europe, many raw materials are banned before we even make it to market, which is slightly different to America. And in America, it tends to be until it's proven to do something, then they'll ban it. But, you know, over here, it's banned before it makes it to market. We, a lot of our raw materials are, have been evaluated and they surpass any legislation that is yet to come in in the next sort of 20, 30 years. There's no, they'll put certain raw materials end up in a chart and say, well, okay, well, this will need to be looked at in this year and we're probably going to ban it in this year, but there's a time period of where it can be used. We don't have any raw materials that are sitting within that time period that's going to be banned because we don't, we know we don't want to use those raw materials anyway. But there's a lot more legislation coming and a lot more happening. But at EcoWorks, we're sort of way above the curve in that. And we sort of don't actually have to worry about it because we're, we're using raw materials that go down a very different path. Particularly, you know, I haven't really mentioned yet, but particularly our, our bacteria and our enzymes that we use, that's the kind of core of the product. So we actually, our biochemists cultivate bacteria. So many of our products use different combinations of bacteria to essentially eat dirt from the surface rather than burn dirt on the surface. And by using those bacteria, you can... As I say, you can remove the odour at source. So the bacteria will create sort of like a biofilm and it continue to eat those odours or those dirt sources from right within the material that it's being applied to. Particularly if you take our our fog buster, which is our fat boil in grease, which is specifically for waste water treatment plants, as we were discussing earlier, that contains five bacteria which are contained in what's called a a fixotropic liquid. It's kind of basically a, a thick gel that gel will, will stick to the surface or the, the surface area within a drain pipe and continue to break down the fat, the oil and the grease and eat it away so it will not create any sort of biomass buildup and block the drain. So it's kind of like a continual maintenance product using very carefully susceptible raw materials to have minimal impact when that wastewater eventually ends up in the sea. Yeah, the bacteria and the enzymes are really kind of the core of the product. We use either bacteria or enzymes or a combination of both. If you look at our fabric cleaner, that uses 
slightly more enzymes because it's a spot stain remover and enzymes tend to work a lot faster and quicker at removing the organic matter on the on the material. That's fascinating, isn't it? And it's actually the way of using nature to combat a lot of our cleaning sort of issues as opposed to contributing a whole new source of material or variety of materials to nature. It's almost keeping it within that ecosystem. Obviously, bacteria and enzymes are incredibly effective, as you mentioned, at processing, breaking down, digesting a lot of different source materials. So being able to use nature as your starting point is incredibly refreshing. I mean, in some ways, it sounds incredibly obvious, annoyingly obvious, but at the same time, it's something that obviously hasn't been done and hasn't been done well enough until your team came along. Absolutely. And it's also, you know, we have to be careful as well, because we say, you know, we say, oh, we use we use naturally derived ingredients and we, and we do. There's many naturally derived ingredients which are which are really good and healthy. But we have to be careful because if a product says it's from naturally derived ingredients, it doesn't always mean that it's good for the environment because there's a lot of naturally derived ingredients that is not necessarily great for the environment. There's particular products that will say naturally derived ingredients, but then you'll see a picture of a a pictogram of a dead fish on the back of the label. So, you know, you do have to be a little bit aware that not all naturally derived ingredients are perfect or good for use, hence why everything we use is put into a table to determine their biodegradability and their environmental impact. I think that's a really important point, and it kind of goes back to what you mentioned about companies or projects that have are using this kind of eco-friendly vibe to you know sell themselves and appreciate greenwashing as a whole other topic and sustainability marketing is a super interesting field in itself but it's a very important point right I mean mercury is a natural product but I wouldn't drink it no, um, no, as an example I mean yeah. there's a lot of natural resources around but they are useful in a specific kind of context and a specific kind of environment usually needing to be highly managed so appreciating it's important point that not everything that's natural is good nor good for our waters yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. and do you feel i mean i think in terms of where ecoworks is now and where it's going what still frustrates you where do you feel like there's still work to do not just within the marine industry but almost in the education of all of us around just the kind of impact we're having with our cleaning products where does it get tough <laughs> i think we started in 2015 with these on the market and the problem at the time which i think we've certainly started to overcome is that a lot of people perceived eco as not something that worked necessarily and there is still that in certain regions where our products are there is definitely still that kind of thought process but that's mainly because previous product that use these terms of environmentally friendly and and sustainable and this kind of thing is essentially what they were doing is weakening the product in order to fit within the remix of being eco-friendly you know quote eco-friendly but i think so that was a major step to overcome in improving to our proving to the consumer to the, to the yachties you know the big boat world you know professional yacht crew that our products do really work and they do work within a time constraint there are certain yacht crews that like things to work very immediately and you you know certain you know two party cleaners you know we can't achieve those results particularly because essentially that is just acid and alkaline two part cleaners so we can't achieve necessarily those results but yacht crews as well sometimes you know aren't aware of the damage that those two part cleaners are actually doing and when i say two part cleaners sorry i mean two party cleaners you know, not only to them, you know, but also to the teak <laughs> and the environment as well, and to the the paint work where the you know the wash water is running down the, the side deck and goes through the scuppers, and this acid is just running down the paintwork and creating these stripes. So education has been a huge part of EcoWorks ever since the beginning, and I'm no biochemist, <laughs> but over the past sort of five years, I've learned an incredible amount, and I'm still learning an incredible amount. And I try and we as a business try and pass those learnings on through education, through our blog writing, or you know, sitting here with you and talking on a pot on a podcast, because I think it's really important for our customers to understand the brand beyond the marketing and understand what EcoWorks Marine is, is really truly about. And it, it really comes down to the core of the makeup of the product and not just 
the the image we're portraying. It's really about it starts where that raw material is actually founded from. All our raw materials are UK source. Our manufacturing is UK, and every raw material is really thought about. So that that's where it starts. The branding comes later. You know that's that's where it starts, and it's. We want our customers to understand that point. Yeah. And I imagine over the last, say, five to 10 years in particular, and actually even over the last 12 months, there's been such a rise in the use of the terminology eco, eco-friendly, sustainable. And actually, has that made it harder for genuine companies like yours and genuine ideas such as yours to to cut through that and say and be able to educate the consumer, right? Because I feel... So much, and we have this debate a lot, even as a team, you hear all these phrases like climate positive that almost have become so synonymous with something so abstract that none of us are kind of able to understand properly anymore Mm. because they're used everywhere. I mean, you can find perhaps an airline calling themselves climate positive these days, and it just makes it it makes it really difficult for people yeah. who are genuinely producing something yeah. worthwhile yeah. To, yeah. to kind of be seen and heard. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's, but I do, I think that the consumer is also, it's a big drive now in consumers to actually really understand what they're buying. You know, I think that there probably always has been, but I think it's becoming more so, more now than ever, you know, because people are aware that there is this sort of lip service being paid we obviously talk with a lot of big yachts, professional yacht crew, and it's not actually, the first questions that they ask now are not actually, well, does the product work? It's actually, I've been questioned for 45 minutes to an hour on the phone about our environmental ethos and and about the biodegradability of our products. And, but that's great because that means that that person really wants to understand our brand and is looking beyond the marketing. And they, they want to understand. So that's great. So call me up and question me. <laughs> yeah, that's a dangerous thing, I guess, for sure. <laughs> People will put you on speed dial. <laughs> and what do you say? I mean, what actually, what motivates you? What is it? I mean, it's not easy actually disrupting the status quo as big as the marine industry, as big as the cleaning industry. And this is mm-hmm. obviously something that's not isolated, you know, EcoWorks, whilst your core focus and perhaps background has been within sort of sailing and yachting, et cetera isn't isolated to those kind of environments, right? I mean, these are a lot of the time things that we could be using anywhere. But what keeps you going on this actual appreciate a big adventure that you, you're on as a team? I think I'm so deep in it now, I can't get out. <laughs> no, I think, you know what keeps me going, I think is more seeing probably what else is out there that just isn't what they what they saying they are because that it, it does bug me it does bug me and I want people to understand what is a true and honest product and I really believe that's what we're delivering and that's what keeps me going I want to educate people I want to I want people to be using products that have minimal effects on the environment and particularly their health you know we have so many cleaners that comment about how their hands just feel so much better after after working with our products mm. over traditional chemical cleaners. We've had yacht crews ordering product online for their parents at home. Mm. So that keeps me going. It, it's the fact that it's when we get professional yacht crew saying they love our products and calling us up for more. It's when we get professional yacht crew, like yesterday, messaging me saying, we love your products. Have you got a dishwashing liquid, you know, actually we've just developed one, (laughs) you know, so it is when people want more and that's great, you know, and that's, it it just, the positive feedback is, is obviously a a really good drive. I mean, we all have good days. We all have bad days. It's not been easy, but all the positive feedback that we've had over the past five, six years has just kept me going, really kept me going and wanting to deliver more. And, and, and we've really become a family kind of unit now. My brother's a lot more involved. He's, he's given us a huge positive impact on the business. And yeah, it just keeps us going, it keeps us going further and further and achieving more and more. And it's a very exciting journey. And obviously, so delighted that we could have you in this conversation because obviously, not just for clean sailors, but just clean seas in general, finding a team, finding a product and just finding an, a sort of ethos that really is about, as you said, the nitty gritty, the real foundation of what it means to be a better product 
is so refreshing and actually is still quite rare. So it's a real treat for us. I think there's one thing I really wanted to touch on with you, having just having got your sort of yacht wash myself. <laughs> <laughs> the fascinating thing is most of your products are highly concentrated. So yeah, yeah. this stuff is like 200 times concentrated, yeah. meaning that you touched on products being watered down to meet standards. You've done the opposite. You've almost concentrated it so much that mm. I need a tiny bit in order to achieve mm. what normally you'd stick, I don't know, a good healthy squirt of something yeah, yeah. into water to clean. What is your thinking behind that? So so yeah, so the products, the product's one thing, and then it's how we deliver the product reducing its environmental impact. So obviously we need to package the product and the product needs to last a certain amount of time also also you know if we could we you know if we take our all surface clean for example that because that's kind of an easy one to talk about is you go to a supermarket you'll buy a trigger spray of a ready to use surface cleaner once that trigger spray is finished people generally pop that in the bin or in the recycling bin they pop out and they go and buy another one so providing concentrates allows us to supply our all surface cleaners in a one litre container or a five litre container, we also go up to 20 litres, so big yachts can actually have their own refill stations on board. Now, a one litre container will actually give you, can give you up to one to 20 at dilution rate. So that's 20 litres of product at use from one bottle. So we're providing more in less. So we're reducing our plastic output. And then as we move on to plastics, now that's obviously a, a huge topic, and, but it's something we have to think about because, of course, we get questioned on how can you say you're environmentally friendly when you're supplying a product in plastic? Well, I agree. The product has to come in some, some sort of packaging. We've done all sorts of research into what the best sort of packaging solutions are. The product itself has a lifespan of, of four years, maybe more. We've tested it up to four years and it still has the same effect as if it were just made. So, but we say four years is a safe kind of safe kind of line to draw. Now, so that whatever it's packaging has to withstand the primary use of keeping containing that liquid for up to four years. So we use HDP2 plastic. We are moving more and more onto PCR plastics, which is made from recycled resins. But if we go back to HDP2, that's basically post-consumer plastic, which is made but it's also made in such a way that it can then be recycled over and over again. Many plastics are single-use plastics, so they can't necessarily be recycled. Certain plastics, you know, you, you, you yourself have done blogs on it with bioplastics. You know, essentially, that's just a single-use plastic containing more chemicals to help it biodegrade. Those chemicals then find themselves in the soil, and don't biodegrade. If a biodegradable plastic ends up on landfill, it doesn't biodegrade it anyway because there's no sunlight in air. So it's a really deep subject, but we have to put our product in some packaging that has a primary use, but also has multiple end of life uses. And that's either being recyclable or reusable. We are now, and we're just launching our first major refill station at Pimma Supply in Mallorca, which is going to contain our yacht wash. We've also got other refill stations gradually cropping up around the UK as well. And we're being approached for more and more refill stations. So, that helps our bottles with their after afterlife use in terms of being reusable because our customers can take their bottles back to their retailers and refill them and they've got the strength and the durability to allow that to happen whereas if we use glass bioplastics compostable plastics they're not able to be well glass can be recycled but it's extremely heavy and very carbon intensive to make and recycle but you know compostable plastics and bioplastics can't be recycled and generally don't have the durability to be reused either. So, you know, we use HDP2 and are gradually moving on, as we say, to the PCR plastics, which is recycled resins, which also has the capability of multiple afterlife options. So, <laughs> so yeah, a bit of a waffle, waffle there, but that's essentially it. And it's, yeah, but it's a huge, it's a huge subject. But it's a very important one and appreciating, obviously, that yeah. plastic is a contentious issue. But the key thing, obviously, single-use plastic, don't go there. Ideally for no. all of us, bioplastics, stay well clear. Plastic is an exceptionally useful and durable resource. I mean, you mentioned DRP earlier. So many of our boats are made from a form of plastic, and it lasts for decades. 
that's a whole other ball game. Appreciate that. We'll do that yeah. at another time. But yeah. it's how you use it, the fact that you can use it for something Absolutely. which stays out of the environment for as long as possible again. So it all sounds incredibly well thought out on the part of EcoWorks. And I could chew your ear off for yeah. hours, Angus, as you know, <laughs> but I won't for the sake of yourself and also for our listeners. But just let me conclude by just saying thank you so much for joining me. It's a real pleasure to have you and to hear just in more depth and detail exactly what EcoWorks is about and where you're going. To confirm, you're distributing in various parts of the world at the moment. How can people get hold of your products? So multiple ways. So if you head on to our website, www.ecoworksmarine.com, we have a where to buy page that provides a map with all available locations of EcoWorks Marine across the UK. We're in Australia, Dubai, We're in America, obviously Europe, New Zealand, (laughs) Thailand, and Hong Kong. So we're in multiple locations. We use a great distribution network, which allows us to ship in bulk. And from each network, they can distribute out locally to their retailers and to their end users. Angus Johnson, co-founder of EcoWorks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been listening to the Clean Sailors podcast. All relevant links to the projects and people we talk to can be found with the podcast link. For all episodes or to get in touch, just visit cleansailors.com. We love to hear from you. We believe that great ideas should be shared, which is why our podcast is free to appear on. So if you've got a project, idea or topic you think we should be discussing, get in touch. In the meantime, thank you for listening and see you for the next episode.